Okay. Um, good morning, everyone. Today is the first series of the simulation webcasting regarding dynamic analysis. So our topic is going to be beginner's guide to dynamic analysis. And I'm Sean Yap from Cat Vision. I'm currently a simulation product engineer in simulation department. Okay. First of all, um, I would like to welcome you to uh, this morning's webinar. Um, um, we host webinars series every Thursday in the same time using the web tool and if you face any difficulties like using a tool, for example there's no screen view or no audio, you can call our company hotline and there will be a specialist to help you. So um, today we're mainly going to talk about dynamic analysis. Okay? What kind of uh, application we will use in dynamic analysis. Right? Uh, we will share some of the case studies, some of the data you need to collect to input into simulations, and we will discuss what kind of result we can get from a dynamic analysis. So first of all, I would like to thank our territory technical manager, Jose Perla. Uh, he shared most of the case study on 2012 uh, SOLIDWORKS World in San Diego. Okay. So the work of this presentation is based on his work. So we will talk about it today, about the applications of the dynamic analysis, the challenges we face, The overview of the dynamics simulation offer in simulation package, including linear dynamics and non-linear dynamics. And also we'll look about how actually uh, we determine the damping in real case and also in uh, simulations. We also spend some time talking about the use of beam element in linear dynamics okay. and the difference between linear and non-linear dynamics okay, before we go into conclusions. Right. So, common applications, right, uh, as for Industries in Malaysia, uh, especially in Benin. Okay. Okay, especially in Benin, we could see that uh, a common use of dynamic analysis is some of the electronics devices, which we will put them on the shaker table. Okay to perform some analysis to make sure that the product design is safe during uh, trans transportations or some uh, serious checking is still in function. Okay. So, however, in real case, the application can range from a very small product to a very big product. Okay. So, this could include the bridges, special structures, okay. or even underground tunnels. Okay. We're going to use some of them as example to show you how dynamic analysis is model and result is analyzed. Okay, a typical challenge in dynamic simulations.
we have I will summarize four main challenge over here the first of them is loadings okay where to get the loadings the loadings and what is the source of the loadings the loadings can come from impact equipment and earthquake the next one is where we're dealing with uh, some sort of special condition especially when we're dealing with uh, large structures there is a uh, interaction between soil right or fluid okay and another one is about damping right? damping it's a characteristic of the uh, objects that gradually uh, reduce the amplitude of the vibration or dynamic response, right? However, what are the value for every object? How do we find that value? And lastly, uh, we will discuss about also the challenge about non-linear material structures, right? So as we know that for some material or some kind of uh, structure or shape, they actually uh, exhibit non-linear behavior. That is, the load apply and the response reply is not in a linear state but in a non-linear state. Right? So how do we accomplish this in simulation and what is the uh, pro and cons when we include this non-linear analysis? So, before we go into further details, let's have a look on the tools available in SOLIDWORKS. Okay, on my um, left hand side, there is linear dynamics. Okay, so we have a few options. The first of it is model time history, okay, what we call MTH, okay, and this is typically what we input into the simulation, okay, we just, we just input the uh, excitation, excitation in the, with time, right. The next one is harmonic vibration. Okay. Harmonic vibration is more to like a harmonic source, something like a motor, something like a machine, right? They have a certain frequency. Okay. Another one is a random vibration. The random vibration, as you can see, is very similar to transit analysis, but the curve is more spiky, right, and more random, right? This could represent a transit, transit, transit problem is like a uh, trucks or car moving on a bridge, okay, or even electronic box uh, under transportation, right? This is more random. And the last one would be the response spectrum analysis, or we call RSA from now. Okay. So as we can see, the RSA what we input is not according to time, but rather according to frequency right this is very common to use when dealing with uh, earthquake problems right? so these are the four types of linear dynamic studies we have and as for non-linear dynamics right there is only one and uh, and it's uh, inside the nonlinear modules. Okay, basically, uh, not only SolidWorks but all of the FEA code. There is only one kind of nonlinear analysis. Okay, we discuss about load, right? We can see four types of uh, dynamic analysis, linear dynamic analysis, actually um, 
um, can be used to solve uh, different type of loading, right? typically four types of loading. So if you review uh, what you can see in this picture, uh, there is a broken bridge, truck is falling down, right? So uh, we're going to analyze, we're going to uh, use the simulation tool uh, to analyze on the newly designed bridge, okay, accompanying Okay, so so this is a view of the newly designed bridges. Okay. Uh, it's made of some steel structures. Okay. So four types of analysis are uh, how we going to use them in different offloading. Okay. For, for, for model analysis, okay, it could be it is an impact. The more closest load definition is an impact of both to the foundation column. Right? As you can see in the curve, okay, so the boat is hit, have a direct hit on the column right? according to time. For harmonic analysis, okay, we can simulate when there is a machine operation or some sort of oscillating harmonic op operation, harmonic excitation on the bridge. Okay. For example, like a winch, a winch operating on the bridge. Okay. The next one is random vibration, could be a truck running over the bridges okay, with different speed and when the time pass by the truck is on the different position on the bridge so it gives us a rather uh, random vibrations. Okay. The last one is response spectrum which is we need to find out the response of the structures under ground motion or earthquake conditions. So, this is how the bridge is designed at the first time. Okay, So, this is the design one. Okay, So, basically, we don't jump into dynamic analysis because there is some more uh, simple analysis we can done before we move into uh, dynamic analysis. Okay? Typically, if you cannot pass this simple analysis, there is no meaning to go for dynamic analysis. Okay? The first one is static analysis. Under static loading is the bridge deformation uh, complied to the standards. Right? In these scenarios, under the standards loadings, the bridge only deform 20 millimeter, okay, which comply the loadings, so we pass the static test. Okay. How, however, um, there is another um, must use analysis on structures that is the buckling, right? So, uh, for those who are not very really sure about buckling, uh, let me explain. The BLF actually is a buckling load factors, where it is uh, lower than one. It could mean that. Uh, the structures can be buckled when there is a sudden load. So static is a, a stable load, right? Buckling is a sudden load. Okay. So as you can see, how the structure is buckled, it is a global buckle. Okay. So it is a global buckle. We have a needs to improve the design before we. Um, before we really go into dynamic analysis. And below, you can see two animations that shows how the, uh, the bridge is uh, buckled. Okay. okay, so 
uh, since uh, the first stages of the basic analysis already show us we need to improve the design, right? So uh, there is no urge to go for dynamic analysis, right? Before we check them out. So diagonal bars are added into the bridges. Okay. So the diagonal bar is not actually giving too much impact on the static, it's still 20 mm because uh, it's designed to counter the buckling mode, right? From the uh, buckling mode shape in the animation on the last slide, we actually know we actually know uh, where is the place for us to put on the uh, structures for the diagonal bars. Okay? So we can see that the BLF is increased to 1.4 and the buckling region is limited to some local regions, which means that the overall structure is uh, safe right now. Okay. So this is some new animations to show you how the new okay, the new buckling shape is uh, what shape is. Okay. Okay, so uh, just cover a bit of theories. I won't spend too much time. So linear dynamic both uh, basically assume that uh, the stiffness, okay, the stiffness and the force loading is rather constant. Okay, so basically uh, the method of uh, using linear dynamic is that sometimes it's called model analysis, which actually um, depends on natural frequency since we already make the stiffness and loading constant. Okay. So in the setup, you will also see that how many frequency you want to include, okay, number of natural frequency. Okay. So this is a quite old technique before uh, the nonlinear dynamic method is invented. Okay. Also, when the computer is less powerful in the old days. Okay. So we can see that one of the most important criteria is the natural frequency of your uh, models. Okay. So some of the so. Uh, in uh, every objects, as what the physical told us, they are unlimited uh, natural frequency from small, from low uh, period to high period. Okay, so actually there is unlimited frequency. How many frequency we should want the software to include? Okay, so in other words, how many mode we want to include? Right from some uh, handbooks or some uh, research, right? it is found that typically for normally for large structures, okay, we should include like 15 to 25 natural frequencies. For some uh, part, there is no general guideline, a more common rule of thumb can be used, that is mass partification factors. Okay. MPF, we want to include the mode right, uh, where M mass partification is bigger than 0 0.5 or in other words, majority of the structure is involved in that kind of mode right? we want to include. So sometimes for small products, uh, it could be higher than 25. Okay. The other one is time step. Right? So if you want to, uh, sometimes the response vibration or response, they have very small frequency, right? In other words, they can vibrate or respond in very fast pace, right? In order to capture um, the very small frequency, there is some simple calculations 
uh, for us to reference that is right typically we can uh, res respond to the highest frequency in the mode in quick we take 0 0.1 right for example um, the highest frequencies have a period of uh, 0 0.1 okay? in the time step we should apply is 0 0.01 so that we can capture uh, the response of it and plot the graph like this a better graph okay? so you don't miss out any uh, resolutions okay the other thing input we need to gather is the damping effect okay damping can occur when there is friction so we slow down the vibration or respond there is also natural damping in the material itself okay there is also viscous damping, which is uh, could be uh, the structure making sound, dissipating the, the sound into the environment. So it can be said that the, the air or water or surrounding is absorbing the damping. Right? It's called viscous damping. Right? However, they are equivalent. Right? So in, in normal FEA practice, we convert all the damping effect into viscous damping. Okay. So let's have a look. For example, um, this is what we have typically have in the frequency study. It will tell us what is the natural frequency of every structure. Okay. So in the frequency analysis, it shows us that uh, the different mode shape and the corresponding uh, hertz and period. Okay, which gives us a clue on how to set up our dynamic analysis. Okay. So, in this case, okay, this is a, uh, in this animation you will see how we apply the loads and how we define the materials uh, to the bridges. Okay. So, typically, when we're defining the inputs, uh, damping is very critical. Okay? Uh, typic there are three types of uh, damping scenarios. The first one is uh, under damp. Right? This is what the structure respond, respond to the time if the uh, structure is under damp. There is also critically damp and over damp. Right. So basically, uh, based on the result, we can see that uh, whether our system is uh, falling to which kind of categorize. Okay. So in the real practice, uh, the others, load, fixture, material, these are the common practice in finite element analysis. We do it all the time in uh, static. Right. So only the damping is uh, could be difficult for us to categorize, and most of it is actually the, uh, rely heavily on uh, experimental tests or known value. Okay, so we're going to discuss a bit how actually we can uh, uh, determine uh, this damping based on a real case study. Okay. So, as we discussed on the last slide, they actually got three types of damping, viscous, coulomb, or friction, or material. Okay? So, in damping, uh, we actually convert the first two into viscous type. We combine all the effects into viscous type. And this is uh, not only in SOLIDWORKS, but other FE applications, we do the same practice. Okay? So, the other two, coulomb or Hyteresis is converted to viscous based on principle of equivalent, equivalent energies. Okay. So, in viscous damping, actually there is two representation. One is called modal damping. Okay. Modal damping is related to frequency. So, in different frequency, there could be different uh, damping value. Okay. So, this is typically what we want to key in. 
the curve. Okay. The other one is relay damping. Relay damping is only we only input two value alpha and beta. Okay. Uh, the first one molar damping is more like inputting a table. Uh, a relay is more like inputting only parameters. Okay. However, if we go into theory, theories, okay, it shows that they have they are related. Okay, alpha and beta is more like a pra, uh, parameter that can describe the curve of the model damping. Okay, so we can see they are interrelated. Okay, so it doesn't matter which one you are using. Okay. So this one is uh, for a multi degree of freedom damping. Okay, they have a slightly different formulas, but uh, they eventually are related. Okay, so the conclusion is uh, it doesn't matter if you use uh, model damping or relay damping. Okay, you just take uh, which one is convenient to you. Okay, so. Okay, what is the effect of the damping? Okay, uh, we can see from this case there is a load on the truss of the frame structures. Uh, it's an impact load. You can see a sharp impact. Okay, in a certain time, a very quick and sharp impact. Okay, so in this case, if you use a low damping value. Certainly, you will see this is the response. 9600 uh, Pascal or convert to stress value. Right? This is a response. And this is a medium damping. Okay. And this is a high damping ratio. Okay. So, as you can see, damping have a considerable effects on the uh, on the results dynamic analysis so basically it, it makes everyone uh, very careful in uh, choosing their damping values right okay so however there is some general guidelines you can uh, follow okay so um, Z is the damping value in uh, actually is in uh, in terms of model damping Okay, it in, uh, in terms of percent or zero, for example, like continuous metal structure is uh, 0 0.02 to 0 0.04. Okay, so you can scan a look and see metal structures, piping system, buildings during earthquakes, concrete structures. So we can conclude that most of them, the last structures, is range from one to seven. Right, this is quite quantified. Uh, if you're dealing with last structures, congratulations, it's a, it's, a, it's a smaller range we can guess, right? So, so the conclusion is for the damping value, okay, either we can go for testing or from the knowledge, okay? So, Typically, there is some, uh, always have some uh, sample calculation we can rely on to have a close guess to the damping of the uh, structures. Okay, uh, there is a article in SolidWorks Knowledge Place. Okay, uh, you can go if you have if you are SolidWorks, uh, if you have SolidWorks, you own a SolidWorks license and you have opened up customer portal account you can actually go online and download these calculators okay so this calculator will base on the frequency and give you a suggest value of relay damping okay so you actually can uh, try to use this before you go to really go and test the uh, damping value okay so The other thing we want to uh, share about is about the beam, the use of beam element in linear dynamics. Okay, 
So as we can see, some of the Wellman or long structures with same cross-sectional profile can be simplified in beam elements. Okay, starting from 2012, we can use uh, beam element in linear dynamics. Okay, so we support all kind of profile, either Wellman or solids. Okay, and we can create contacts between them, solid, shell, and beam. Okay, so. In the new technology, the beam is imprinted in the solid or shell face, so there is a more accurate uh, bonding connections. Okay, and most commonly the beam is come in the cylindrical shape, but uh, in the result interpretation, uh, we actually can render the beam back into the original shapes. Okay, so uh, what the beam the use of beam elements can help in our simulations. Okay, so if you make your assumption correct and you apply it into correct uh, kind of uh, parts, right? Like you see here in the Wellman, we have converted some of the solid element into beam element. We actually will get a very close result with very different solving time and the uh, result files. Okay, as you can see on the left side, we use solid element on all of the parts. We take half an hour to solve it, and the right side we use beam element. We only use five minutes to solve it. Okay, so this is how it is. Okay, so uh, let's combine all the facts, the new type of element used, and the determination of damping ratios and uh, loadings, right? Let's use a case study to uh, summarize this part of the uh, sections, the linear dynamics, to show you how the real work is done. Okay, so uh, this is a case study shared by Jose. It's a uh, it's a transformer that uh, need to be uh, built in Latin America. Okay, so um, the industry there industry there is already tightened the regulations because of uh, an earthquake in Chile in 2011 okay so this is a transformer now this kind of uh, structures has to undergo uh, earthquake test or dynamic test from uh, since 2011 okay so this is how the real products looks like so they will be required to mount on the uh, uh, shaker tables, okay, with the acceler accelerometers uh, recording the response of the structures, okay, and to check if the structure is safe or not, okay. So typically, this is what the machine output, okay, and after converting into the uh, post process, okay. In the machine, you can see that there is a, uh, you find out that the, the accelerometer, uh, the, the natural frequency of the product is five hertz, okay. And subsequently, it give out uh, the damping ratio at uh, 2.7%, okay. So this kind of structure is fit into the our general guideline, which is one to seven percent. This kind of structures. Okay. So our objective is we're going to examine whether soluble simulation can reproduce the test of getting five hertz natural frequency. Okay. So that because natural frequency and the damping, it will be important to our linear dynamic result. So we're going to test and see uh, if we can reproduce the test. So actually if the product design is failed, the next time we can actually uh, test on the simulation rather than go to real product testing. That will save the prototype cost and the time cost. Okay. So actually in this uh, Real product testing that is actually uh, more tests is run on. 
right? Basically, in terms of direction, there is uh, two types of uh, direction, longitudinal and transversal vibrating. Okay? And in terms of product design, they actually have three variations of product design. The first one is both to the table directly. Okay, the second one is uh, the damping system. They add a damping de device, which is uh, at the, here you can see some under the boat area, there is some uh, uh, blue parts, right? There is a damping design one and damping design two. And it is designed to reduce the natural frequency or to increase the damping ratio so that they have a more stable response to impact or earthquake. Okay? So uh, in each kind of design, for sure, they will give out uh, different kind of values. Okay. So this is how it looks like when we uh, prepare our models in simulation. This is typically the mesh. Right? A model like this will roughly take up to uh, 34K nodes. Okay. So this is the test frequency when we fix on the bottom face. Okay. So you see the green color Okay, over the legs. Okay, this is to simulate the first kind of uh, test, which is the boat into the table. Okay, so we replace them by fixed fixture. Fixed fixture uh, can be say is a very rigid connections to the ground. Okay, so we got five point seven hertz. Okay, so. The other simulation is run out. Okay, we also simulate uh, include of uh, a table with uh, eight hundred millimeter in uh, side length okay, and fifty millimeters. You can see that they use different uh, frequency because we have include the table as well. Okay, one is six point three and eight point eight. Okay, so if we draw out the plate, okay, we model it inside our simulation. The value, like before we uh, model, is is five point seven. Now it's uh, reduced to five point three. Okay, which is one step closer to what you get from the test result in real product. Okay, so. It really depends on for the other type of uh, damping system when you add the dampers whether to model the plate or not actually give a difference of the natural frequency okay so this is the summary of uh, the comparison okay in the full scale test what we obtain on the machine is five okay and what we simulate based on how what kind of base you include, you actually have a different natural frequency. Okay, you simulate on the table, right? With different size, you got from a more rigid table. Five hundred mm is a more rigid table because it's more small. Uh, it can be eight point eight, but for a bigger table, it could be five point seven. Okay, uh, if the structure is mounted on concrete. It could be 10. If you mount, mount on a very rigid base, it could be 12.8. Okay. So what is the conclusion over here? So in most of the time, uh, engineers tends to uh, stick to the table result, real physical testings. But most of the time, that uh, they have uh, ignored the assumptions of the testing facilities. Okay. In this case, this kind of uh, shaker table, they have a holding structures, right? Actually, the holding structure is not rigid. They have some flexibility, okay? They underestimate the frequency value. 
Okay. So the frequency actually for the structure is uh, very related to the holding structures or in other words the environment uh, of the mountings. Okay. Like we put in the table, put in a concrete, put in a rigid base, actually can be different. Okay. So um, what we can say that all of them can be used as a reference and particularly in simulations we are able to explore the possibilities that uh, even though it's in a different kind of uh, mounting uh, situations. Okay? So all of this value can be used as a reference to perform dynamic analysis. Okay? So we can combine the facts and know that how, which one is the worst. Okay? So another case study we want to share is uh, real uh, case studies in uh, in Latin America. So this is uh, bridge simulations. Okay. So typically uh, to there is some reference load we can put inside. This is more to a random vibration. This is a uh, trucks or car running across the bridge. Right. We just in simply install a vibration meters on the structures so we can record the vibrations. Okay. So and we use the frequency module in SOLIDWORKS to calculate the frequency and then we use the reference uh, 1 to 7 damping to check the response of the structure. Okay. So this is uh, how we model the bridge in SOLIDWORKS. Okay. And how we uh, get the vibration models. Okay. So usually when we do our vibration models, we can take on some uh, recorded oscillations in famous earthquake, for example, El Centro earthquake. Okay. Uh, usually when there's earthquake, people talk about what is the magnitude of the earthquake. Uh, eight magnitude eight, magnitude six, based on the Ries uh, classifications, right? And most of the code, for example, in uh, okay, the building codes, they usually uh, state some of the statement like uh, uh, to design the structures, you should reference to the earthquake, uh, the biggest earthquake in uh, one hundred year or 500 years or 2000 years depends on the standards you use. So basically you can actually easily achieve this kind of uh, accelerogram, we call it, okay, the earthquake load in the online resource. Okay. So there is actually different ways in conducting the earthquake analysis. There is one called response spectrum analysis. Okay. So this is the standard approach before the powerful personal computer is invented. Okay, this is the standard approach to estimate the linear systems. Okay. So the method is converting the accelerogram we show on the last slide, the converting into response spectrum. As you can see, the earthquake loading record by the machine actually is in time domain but they convert it into frequency domain. This is called response spectrum analysis. Okay. However, there is no limitation in using the response spectrum analysis. There is sometimes it can underestimate or overestimate the site specified ground motion characteristics. Okay. So data source you can get from online. This is one of the uh, recommendations uh, from the Peer Pacific Earthquake Engineering Research Center Ground Motion Database could be downloaded online. Okay. So let's have a look okay, on this uh, bridges for the earthquake. Okay. So 
if you use the uh, response spectrum, we can see that the column actually displays 6.9 and the bridge structure displays 11.4. So the difference between these, these values okay, actually will damage the structures. So they are tearing apart for five, uh, roughly uh, 4.5 millimeters. Okay, so the tearing will generate stress, will destroy the structures. So our design is to make sure that uh, the distortion in this uh, very sensitive area is uh, minimized okay, or comply to standards. Okay, so as we say that ISS is a standard approach before the powerful computers is rendered. Okay, there is for sure there is other way to analyze. There is time history, model time history, the first linear dynamic method we have in SOLIDWORKS simulation. That is, in, instead of convert the loads into frequency domain, we directly import with time domain. Okay? So if we use model time history, we can get uh, the whole time response. Okay? And however, in the expense of uh, expensive computational time, typically it's uh, more than RSA. Okay, so if you not, <coughs> so if you are not interested in looking at the time response, you're just only looking for stress and displacement. Okay, and you have limited time, you can go for RSA method. Okay, so in the RSA method, actually there is four kind of uh, method. Uh, is listed inside there. One of them is uh, a square root summation of square or absolute sum, complete quadratic, complete quadratic combinations, or based on the method of Nava Research Lab, okay, NRL. So uh, basically, we don't worry about which kind of uh, code we want to choose because basically they are stated in the standard, okay. So this is typically uh, what we can have uh, in the uh, results. Okay, so the red one is what we input inside the simulations. Okay, it's what we input, and the blue one is what the structure response. Okay. So. If we compare the result between MTH and R RSA, okay, uh, do remind that as we said the limitation of RSA, okay, uh, there is some uh, overestimate or underestimate uh, for some certain situations, okay. So we can see that uh, actually if for accuracy MTH method is uh, more accurate and here I show you uh, the RSA based on four different correction methods okay so we can see that all RSA actually have similar response okay and uh, compared to MTH in this bridge analysis they actually overestimate for a magnitude of roughly 20% okay so uh, this is most of the case that stay on this magnitude for different kind of structures. Okay, so conclusion is both method is available in soluble simulations. Okay, so you choose MTH because of uh, more accurate uh, solutions, but you come with a more longer computational time. You choose RSAs, okay, because it save time. However, you always know that there is a certain percentage, in, usually it's 20% uh, compared to MTH. Okay? The both method works. Uh, both methods is complied to the standards. Okay? So, this is uh, last sessions. Before we go to last sessions, uh, we have talked about impact loadings, transit loadings, harmonic loadings, and even earthquake loadings. Okay.
Okay, so all these are falling into non-linear di uh, linear dynamics. Okay, how about linear di non-linear dynamics? Okay, non-linear dynamics come into play when there is non-linear behavior either in the shape response or either in the material response, like plastic deformation. So this is uh, another case study shared by our delicacy managers. It's uh, Turner simulations. Okay. So this is once a classified simulation, but now it's uh, ready to come into open case. Okay. So you can see in the model that we have modeled the soy and the turner structures. Okay. So typically the soy itself, okay, as we uh, explained in the transformer, we can say that uh, the interaction with the installation is actually very important and this is actually one of the examples. Okay. The transformer installed in uh, concrete, installed on the table during you doing the physical test, installed in a uh, steel structure is really different response. Okay, so the environment is very important. So in this case, actually in this non-linear dynamics, we actually include uh, this environment that is the soil. And interestingly enough, soil is a very non-linear material. Okay. okay, so uh, soy is actually a drucker bucker material that we will use in it. Okay, so this is what you see when you simulate. We simplify the problem into 2D problem. Okay, and this is the soil response. Okay, and the stress encounter in the turner structures which is made of uh, concrete. Okay. This is how the load is translated to the concrete structure. Okay. And you do see some plastic deformation over there because we are using non-linear material models for these simulations. Okay. So this is the test have undergoes. We're actually putting two maximum load and two minimum load with a time interval okay at one of the load okay so okay if we go on linear dynamics and check on the stress we will instantly found that did the loading we create okay have already assist uh, the U stress Okay, which means that either the soil or the concrete, they have permanent deform. Okay, in this case, uh, linear assumption doesn't hold anymore, and we will move into linear dynamic stress for accurate stress value since it is above U region. Okay, so as we can see, the low step in linear dynamic it responds to two hundred seventy millimeters, and in the second load. We respond us 340 millimeters. This is what uh, predicted by linear analysis. Okay. However, as we know that soil and concrete, uh, especially the soil, is uh, have a very high nonlinearity, as we show in the curve as we behold beside. Uh, originally, the soil is not very linear, and after the U there is some permanent deform. Okay. So what would be the difference if you use a more accurate nonlinear material model to calculate the effect? Okay. We can see that the first one, linear is 270, now is 460. The second one is 340 and now this is 558. Okay. So you can see always linear analysis underestimate uh, the results. Okay. Okay, so this is the uh, summary of the results we have uh, for nonlinear analysis and linear dynamics.
okay, with different dampings. So we have used the damping uh, from 0 to 5 okay, and compare it with nonlinear dynamics. <laughs> Okay, so for the linear dynamics, we always have uh, underestimations of the displacement. So the effect of damping is not enough to cover this because it's unrelated to damping. Okay, so the red one is zero damping. If you add damping, it's always go lower. If you go for nonlinear damping, it will go higher. Okay, so the conclusion for for this analysis is actually uh, telling us that if the linear assumption is already violated, we should move on to nonlinear dynamics. Okay, so um, let me make the conclusion for this. So we have used some case study to discuss the linear dynamics in the last structures. What information we need to input? which information is sensitive, how we can get those information. Okay? And when there is no information, there is no uh, physical testing data available, uh, how we can take reference to obtain those uh, values. Okay? And also, we introduce beam elements, okay? some of the good enhancement throughout the years to help you to solve dynamic analysis faster. Okay? We also discuss on how actually real damping ratio is determined, how it can be changed due to uh, uh, environment, mountings, holding structures, okay, or even model design. Okay. And we also compare the result of linear and nonlinear dynamics, and we conclude that when the linear assumption is violated, right. Uh, the linear result is always underestimate the results. Okay, in terms of displacement. Okay, so uh, thank you for your interest, and now we can move on to Q and A sections. Okay, so if you need to ask some questions, uh, you can type in the chat. Okay, or raise your hand. Okay, so I can uh, unmute your mic so you actually can and speak up with us so any questions Okay, there is one. Um, this question asks that uh, the case study show is more on uh, structures, design, constructions. Uh, is it means that uh, uh, what would be like when we apply the dynamic analysis on electronic device? Okay, that's a good question. Um, I can say from the methods, it is the same. So first of all, we run linear dynamics okay, for common materials, typically steels or electronic box. We can start by running a linear dynamics, okay, and then depends on loading condition, we decide what kind of uh, analysis you want to take. Whether it's a model time history, random vibration, response spectrum, or harmonic analysis. Okay, for example, if you test a, a electronic box based on the military standard 810 it requires to run on a shaker timber test okay that would more related to model time history right there's a spike on it okay so it just depends on what standard describe uh, what kind of situation then you choose the correct corresponding 
and if necessary when you find that the linear assumption is violated then we move on to uh, nonlinear dynamics and all the methods uh, like we just now discussed uh, like uh, how to determine the damping ratios right how to use all the frequency analysis to find out the frequency how many frequency you want to include uh, they are still same we are used to still use the same method so does that answer your questions okay good so uh, any other questions okay. so if there is no questions um, if the, uh, you, you can always uh, if you have future question, you can always contact us by calling our hotlines or write us an email. Okay, so I hope you have enjoyed these sections, and see you next time. Bye.